The Vietnam War was raging half a world away, but one night in 1972, the White House hosted a gala, complete with an easy listening group of singers for entertainment. Mo Rocca introduces us to the woman who stole the show. And so tonight in the White House, in this room, in this company. The date, January 28, 1972. A monthly university in print. The occasion, a White House gala celebrating the 50th anniversary of Reader's Digest magazine. The entertainment that night, the wholesome Ray Conniff singers. And if the music is square, it's because I like it square. <laughs> but what happened next was anything but square. President Nixon, stop bombing human beings, animals, and vegetation. You go to church on Sundays and pray to Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ were here tonight, you would not dare drop another bomb. Bless the Berrigans and bless Daniel Ellsberg. Could you see the president? Oh, yes, he sat right in front of me in the front row. Did you look at him? Yes, I did. I was speaking to him. You looked right at him? Yes. He was like this, <laughs> frozen. <laughs> he had a frozen smile. He did not know what to do. The woman who stunned President Richard Nixon and the star-studded audience with a plea to end the war in Vietnam was Canadian-born Carol Ferrasi. I folded up the sign and I stood there and I thought, hmm, okay, let's see what happens now. <laughs> and he gave the downbeat for Ma, he's making eyes at me. <laughs> Could it have been a more perfect song? No. Ma, he's making eyes at me. Ma, he's talking nice to me. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> When the music stopped, Ray Conniff apologized, and Ferrasi was asked to leave. She did so graciously. The war had been going on under the Johnson administration. So what specifically was your objection to Richard Nixon's handling of it? My objection was he could have stopped it at any time. And he kept telling people there were all these reasons why it couldn't happen, and we were winning. It was just one lie after another. We could have gotten out of that war. The next minute, only because of him and people like him, were we still doing these atrocities to children and women and the planet. Carol Ferrasi says that standing up to the leader of the free world came naturally to a girl who'd grown up in a rough Toronto neighborhood. Was this characteristic of you? Always, my whole life. I've been in trouble my whole life. <laughs> but the right kind of trouble, I think or, so. right? Yes, I yeah. think so. As John Lewis said, the good trouble, right? The good trouble. And you didn't surprise yourself there. It just came naturally to you. Yeah. Would you have considered yourself political at that point? No. No, I just cared about people's feelings. And it was, I knew how wrong that was. As for that strong sense of right and wrong, Farasi says that was instilled in her during Sunday school at the Salvation Army. I was a member of the Army of Christ on the planet, and I, it was my duty to protect people and to help as much as I could, and I did. Any friend of mine didn't have to worry about being beat up going or coming from school because I protected everybody. I was a mean little kid. I could beat anybody up. <laughs> Ferrasi had been a staple on variety shows in the 1960s. A sought-after backup singer, she'd performed alongside the Smothers Brothers, Johnny Mathis, even Frank Sinatra. What did you do with Frank Sinatra? One of his albums. Which one? Uh, the Christmas album. But the incident in the East Room made her a headliner. One of the women asked me, um, how could I come to somebody's private home and uh, create a fuss? And I said to her, you know, I'm sure that in the time of Jesus Christ, there were lots of people that said to him, look, you know, if you don't like it here, why don't you uh, go back up to uh, heaven with daddy up there and, you know, uh, just leave us alone. Um, that's, you know, we've got to change it. And that's what I'm doing. 
this is the front page of the LA Times. It's a, it was headlines all over the world. I mean, this is a banner headline. Yeah. Singer stuns Nixon guests. Uh -huh. Woman assails war policies from stage in White House. Right? Did you expect this kind of press coverage? No, actually I didn't. <laughs> I hadn't thought beyond what I was going to do. President Nixon, stop bombing human beings, animals, and vegetation. Her one night only run at the White House changed her life forever. The calls that came into the house, were, I mean, every two minutes that phone rang, and a lot of it was, we know where you live, you won't last the night. We're gonna come and kill you. There were a few rah-rah for you, but a lot of it was, you're in deep trouble. How did you deal with the threats? Well, I hung up on a lot, on a lot of them. You know, how do you deal with it? You don't. Today at age 81, mm -hmm. Carol Ferrasi hopes what she did that night. There you go, grab a corner. <laughs> 51 years ago, still resonates. Who do you hope hears your message or is inspired by what you did 50 years ago? People like me, ordinary people like me, who realize their voice is just as powerful as anybody else's. All they have to do is use it. You make it sound simple. It is. Duh. It is. Speak your mind.